here, so 2014, another major championships coming to these tracks. Well, the snow conditions, normally they do have uh, plenty natural snow in this area, but they to ensure that this race would always go on. Some 0.4, 40 centimetres of soft man-made, machine-made snow has been put down, and that is what the athletes are mostly skiing on, some natural snow mixed in. Well, look at this intensity, it's uh, separated. What have we got? Ten athletes there at the front. That just shows how fast this early pace is set by Therese Johan. And she's keeping on fighting. The head is slightly down. Breaking into the herring boat, making sure the edges are getting grip. But Justina Kvalchuk, as usual, her head down. There's the, the Finn, Leitamaki, bib number seven going through. Follis. Maybe not her strong car, the classic technique, but she'll certainly realize the importance of keeping with the lead group today. Follows in second place, 27.2 seconds behind in the tour standings. Well, has Therese Johau taken inspiration from Peter Nauter, who incredibly, each time round at the 3.3 kilometer lap, he won each of the sprints, gaining 90 seconds or one and a half minutes subtracted from his time setting up a, a wonderful chance for him to potentially go ahead of Dario Colonia who leads in the men's tour the dark suits five of the Finnish national team up there in the top bracket you could say as a team the Finnish team here in the women's field certainly uh, the strongest Norway in the top 20 have four competitors, so have Finland, Italy two, Sweden three. So coming up to the 1.7 marker, it's been a fearsome attack since the start, we're continually climbing since the stadium. Slight separation from Johau and Kvalchu, some 10 metres back to Petra Maric who's slipping, she's having to go way out of the tracks to get purchase from her skis. And that's a real pity if it's a, a waxing issue which is keeping Petra Maric back today. This is her key card, this is her strong technique, the classic. See all the red suits there, the Norwegians. Prošaškova's in there as well from Slovakia. Ranked 10th and did wonderful tour. She's more recognized as a sprinter, but in the tour to ski, you must be able to put all distances, both disciplines, freestyle and classic together, if you want a chance of winning this one. So just past 1.7 kilometers in the 10 kilometer race. So a slight reprieve coming up in the terrain. You can see the steep, short, sharp climb there, but then a, a fairly brief downhill section. Well, that's it. It's over the 15, 16 second rest that you have on this uh, downhill segment. And then it's ready again for the big climb. Petra Maric has been left behind. Looking very tired indeed. And so is the rest of the field being left behind. The intensity that Kvalchuk, she's uh, trying to destroy this field and pick up all the bonus seconds at the 3.3 so three times round this 3.3 kilometer track and on the day off yesterday uh, most of the athletes made their way to Val de Fiem and had a very easy look around this track they do know it those who've raced at the Tour de Ski in the past but very important to get out there and just remind yourself of the terrain and then uh, the athletes mostly mind map this, decide at which point they're going to attack and which techniques to use on which part of the track. As you can see, very fast segment here, up to 55 kilometers per hour. Justina Kvalchuk, so strong. Just having a look to her right at Therese Johaugen tucked in behind Johan at that point but coming up, uh, you're lining yourself up at this point for the attack for the bonus seconds Mariana Longa 
Saarinen in from Finland and Maric trying to close down on Kvalchuk and Johan. There's bit number two. Ariana Follis was so, so fired up to stay with the lead group, but I think that shows how fast they've attacked this first three, three kilometers. Follis somewhat off the pace. Well, which way is this going to go? I think the good money would say it's Kvalchuk who, with the strong upper body power, will take this one to the first sprint point in the race. <laughs> but look at Therese Johan, she will not give in. 200 metres to go to the first of the bonus seconds. Kvalchuk at his advantage, Kvalchuk. Therese Johan is going to tuck in behind and probably try to change tracks at, at the final 10 or 20 metres. Just getting that little advantage of wind drafting with 100 metres to go now. That looks to me like Saarinen is moving into third place. Mariana Long to fourth, Petra Maric won all of these bonus seconds last year but not in the fight today for the top three position at the moment Therese now needs to move out and try to cross into the track alongside if she wants to pick up these 15 seconds there she goes and it's about arm power only arm power is quicker on this gently down terrain which one now oh, it's not to be for Therese So Kowalczyk adding a further 15 seconds to her lead time. It was 27 ahead of Follis and it's well, plenty more now with Follis further down the track. There's Mariana Longa, Saarinen of course in third, picking up five seconds. Marta Elden, the young Norwegian, in the top ten, led to Mackey, tenth position for Finland. Well, having just completed the first three kilometres, we're going to take a, a very quick break right now we'll pick up on the rest of the action very soon like products of precision engineering accurate in their play for hour after hour only when it's over is there any sign of emotion world snooker and the london masters tomorrow afternoon live on british euros board 2 a chance to look there we are the, the virtual standing with the bonus seconds now being added on there we are so just Justina Kvalchuk one minute ahead of Mariana Longa further down Anna Hag losing more time Therese Johan moving up from 10th sorry 9th up into 8th position and here we are back on the second rotation of 3.3 kilometers Saarinen trying to keep the third place slot just ahead of Mariana Longa the mad dash up the front. Therese Johau, incredibly, leading this one ahead of Justina Kowalczyk. Justina knows how important today is. She may not be the best in terms of technical terms, the best skater, but with an engine like Kowalczyk, a, a work rate like Kowalczyk, she's incredible. She will not give in. Striding out there for Sam Aronen. Mariana Longa trying to stay with Saarinen. It's quite important to stay with the athlete ahead of you. And the bright suit from Slovenia, Petra Maric. She's given so much to this tour, winning both days of sprint racing. And I'll just remind you what uh, the athletes have been through since last Friday. Last Friday, over half, it was the 25 kilometer time trial for the women setting them up for the next day which was a 10 kilometer classic that was last saturday last sunday it was a 1.2 kilometer sprint and the the leaders or the to get into the finals you had to go around that 1.2 kilometer track four times at absolute maximum day four we saw five kilometers classic five kilometers freestyle and then the first of the days off 
Another day of sprinting after the day off last Thursday. 1.2 kilometer in the freestyle this time, followed by the distance race, the 15 kilometer in Toblach, where it was freestyle and where Justina Kowalczyk uh, lost some 50 seconds to the fastest skating time of Mariana Longa. And here we are today. The seventh day of racing, 10 kilometer in the classic technique with the bonus seconds, the all important 15, 10 and five second bonuses and if you're not up the front clearly you're not even putting yourself in the picture how different the women's race is to the men's race we had uh, right the way through to 12 kilometers we had a group of 25 men all together i think it just shows the strength of kowalczyk and at the moment therese johau in the women's field is quite a different story sarinen she seems to be closing the gap she was 10.9 seconds behind, in fact, probably just hanging on to that 10.9. Mariana Longa struggling to stay in contact with Saarinen. Beautiful technique there from Saarinen. She's only 1 meter 58, but the way she reaches forward with her legs and strides back, she covers so much distance. Therese Johan, on the other hand, is all about dynamic tempo doesn't slow down at all during this 10 kilometers so Saarinen in the double bowling double bowl single leg kicking now oh, Petra Maric, Maric she's uh, just looking that little bit fatigued today slowly being absorbed by some of the athletes the other athletes closing in on her and pick up on some of the athletes there that's Katrin Zeller, the first of the Germans bit 14 Britta Johansson Norgren from Sweden and uh, well there's Charlotte Kalla I thought Charlotte Kalla might be able to stay with this pace, the early pace but clearly struggling today for Kalla, she will be good tomorrow on the climb and of course it was back in uh, 2008 Charlotte Kalla, at the age of 20 year old, won the overall tour de ski. But uh, not likely this year. Just looking at the journey which Kowalczyk has taken over the last four years. The first tour she was 11th, the second tour she was 7th, then 4th. And she won it last year and she's looking like she's setting herself up for a two in a row victory this time. So, Kowalczyk. Yeah, sorry, Johan Kowalczyk, Saarinen in the top three, but the thought of 10 seconds taken off Saarinen's time was 10.9 of 3.3 kilometers. Mariana Longa slipping badly, 27 behind. Marta Elden, 37 seconds. And way to the right of our screen, you can just see Petra Maric. She can't go near the tracks because her skis are slipping back. So she's having to go wide, and you, sl you get slightly better purchase on the softer snow at the side of the tracks oh, and Charlotte Calla bit number four indicating she's fourth in the tour at the moment later Mackey she was fifth and fourth and now down in 16th having a bad day at the races for uh, later Mackey fatigue has to be in everybody's body but certainly for some of the younger athletes even more so total, total concentration there from Charlotte Calla So just over half distance and no change at the front or well, occasional changes at the front. Sometimes we see Therese at the front, Johan from Norway and then Justina Kowalczyk. But Justina will be lining herself up very, very soon for the second of the bonus points after another complete rotation into the stadium. Just looking at Therese Johan, 2.59 behind at the beginning of the day. She certainly can move up into from ninth place all the way up into fifth or fourth and that really will set her in off in a good position tomorrow on the nine kilometer race which finishes at the top of the huge alpine downhill 
section. Alp Charmise. An incredible finish to this. Eight days of intense racing where the tracks or the downhill slope will be lined with spectators. And well, a sign of respect for what these uh, women and men have been through over the last 10 days. Well, there's Petra Madic. She was leading the tour after this day last year. And by some 21 seconds into the final day last year, but it doesn't look like it's going to be the same on this, which could be her final tour of the ski. Petra Madic really saying farewell to cross country at the end of this season. Mariana Longa, we saw her fall at the, in the first couple of 100 meters. And you can just feel the, the spectators, the coaches willing her forward just a little tired today so we're lining up for the final 300 400 meters into the stadium now if this is Justina and of course it's Saren in, uh, in third place Kowalczuk and Teresio have already gone past this point well there we are coming up to 200 meters to go once again the arm power the double pole strength of it uh, Justina Kowalczuk, first the 6.6 kilometers. You can see Therese trying so hard, but not even having an effect uh, on the meters between them. In fact, she is. She's closing it ever, ever so slightly, but I don't think so. Ah, once again, <coughs> Kowalczuk picking up another bonus of 15 seconds, which will be deducted by the end of the day. Ah, she really is securing her lead now and making tomorrow well, something of a procession of... Sharmis, it. it was 10.9 seconds, 3.3 kilometers to go, it's extending, well, it'll be over 30 for sure, maybe 35 seconds, oh, 35.1 seconds, it just shows the intensity up at the front there from Justina Kowalczuk, she's trying to win the Tour on the second last day, and just making it a procession tomorrow. Mariana Longa tucking quickly in behind Eldon's skis. Marta Eldon. Christofferson there, Ustberg, another Norwegian, but uh, Petra Maric hanging on in there, but it's, it's very tough for the Slovenian. Bordley looks extremely tired. She did say that she would suffer from the sprint races. Once again, confirmation. Justina Kowalczyk, 15 seconds. Therese Johaug, once again, the 10 seconds. And once again, Saarinen, five-second bonus. And this is how Justina put it together. day yesterday is certainly Kowalczyk looked to me a little unstable as we see her virtual lead 144 ahead now at the beginning of the day it was only 27 seconds well now closing in to the final stages about three kilometers to go in this 10 kilometer master classic race second last day on the tour de ski and therese johan trying so hard to give herself a chance tomorrow on our shermies eight kilometers freestyle and therese johan one of the lightest athletes in the field of 39 trying to set herself up for an attack tomorrow to try and move closer and closer to the podium. Well, what a turnaround in performances today. Kowalczyk only led by 27.2 seconds ahead of Ariana Follis, who is now in sixth position, but 52 seconds behind, and that isn't taking the 30 seconds bonus, which Kowalczyk has just won herself into account. Mariana Longa, who were just uh, just tucked in there behind Saarinen. Mariana Longa was 
two seconds behind, but well, it's a huge margin now, over two minutes behind. And the Norwegian coach is just uh, trying to give Teresio Haug some more push. And Therese really wants to place herself, I would say, some 40 metres ahead of Kowalczyk in the final 200 metres if she safely wants to take the final bonus sprint to take the victory in this race. Look at the different tempo there, the super strong stomach and upper body and arms of Kowalczyk compared to the incredible tempo there from Therese Johan. Kowalczyk has quite a team supporting her, three wax technicians, one coach, one doctor, and one coach. Really, that's what you need at this level to make sure that your equipment glides as fast or equally as glide as anyone else in the race. And, uh, of course, recovery is so important. Massage is also so important, especially with such intense races here. Sprint races, distance races, it's amazing. In its fifth year now, the Tour de Ski, and I think it really has lifted the profile of cross-country skiing, and especially in tomorrow's event, the men's and the women's, well, the men is over 10 kilometers freestyle up uh, to the top of Alpshermies, and it, it is, and it will be the most viewed cross-country race of the whole season. Combination of 10 days of racing, or eight days of racing over 10 days, and uh, a lot of traveling in between. to Eldon alongside Mariana Longa with Saarinen fading twice she crossed the halfway of the, the lap line in, in third place Follis was 52 seconds she seems to have found something special some extra energy from somewhere Ariana Follis moving forward Baby Levin just gone past Marta Christofferson and you can just see the, the pain the reach of Petra Maddox leg, she's trying to extend forward to get more grip through these skis. Clister, a few of the athletes on silver clister in these warm conditions. Three degrees the air temperature, zero degrees the snow temperature. And when you don't get such good perches as we saw there with Teresio Howe, then you have to change something or you'll keep on slipping back. So she darted out of the tracks into the softer snow and she got some perches, head down, attack mode. Face just looks so relaxed but so focused. Well, Teresa Johan, what could she do to beat Kowalczyk? Look at the gap they now have. This is unusual. Huge gap back to third place. Mariana Longa, Marta Eldon, almost side by side. Marta slipping into the herringbone run using the edges of the skis. There's Saarinen trying so hard to hold on to this incredible pace. Look at the gap. Johan Kowalczyk working together almost, or pushing each other on at the front and absolutely destroying the rest of the field. And these are some big names in cross-country skiing that they're destroying out here by almost a minute, 57.2 seconds back to Mariana Longa. Marta Eldon, 59. Saarinen must just be over one minute. Yes, one minute, three seconds. Ball is bib number two. Well, she may well lose the bib number two today, given the fact that she hasn't picked up on any of the bonus seconds. But she will certainly look at tomorrow and will believe that she can move herself forward again. Petra Maric to the right of the screen, almost walking, just trying to get some purges through her skis, gasping for air and slipping. Johansson, Norgren, ahead of Kala. You can see Kala, three athletes behind. Jakobsen just gone through. And here's Kala now, trying so hard. It's uh, ideal to keep your head up. And look at the discipline there from Kala. Tendency is if your head goes down, you're 
the weight goes back a little and it's even more difficult to get purchase through the grip part of the ski to run up these hills so it's still Kvalchuk Johau and Longa Well, the final and closing stages of the 10 kilometer. Kibalchuk is uh, so, so focused to win another one of these stages to increase her lead in the overall tour standing. And she's gone early. She's gone with 900 meters to the finish line. Tamisio Howe just unable to stay with this outrageous pace. The best in the world. Uh, well, the best in the tour, I was going to say. The best in the world. Well, watching right now is... Marit Björgen back in Norway and she says she cannot suffer watching this tour she didn't attend last year she hasn't attended this year but she will be racing next year well there's the Polska scarf and uh, well Poland should be proud in fact Poland is very proud she has won so many special awards for her performances Justina Kowalczyk at the Olympics last year and now just showing the world how strong she is to lead the tour. It'll be interesting to see the margins, which will be computed shortly after Kowalczyk crosses the finish line. This looks like Marta Elden trying to close down Marianne Longa for her third position in this race and potential to pick up another five-second bonus. Well, Marianne Longa's got a, her mind focus on holding on to third place, but look at this up front the machine she is so so strong she said she was exhausted two days ago after 15 kilometers of freestyle skiing and somehow she's found some energy again to come in and take this victory over 10 kilometers in the classic style Teresio Haug not giving up by any means trying to close the gap down but uh, unlikely now so it's another victory for Justina Kowalczyk in Val de Fiem Oh, and see how much that means to her. She's picked up all of the bonus seconds, 45 further seconds on top of her victory time. And well done to Norway and Therese Johaug. Exhausted. And so she should be hanging on to the, the pace there of Justina. <laughs> all respect they have for each other, all the cross-country skiers. And Justina, she's one of these rare athletes that can take herself and push herself way beyond what... Uh, what would be expected and she's done it again well done to Mariana Longa she needs to be aware that Marta Eldon is closing the gap behind her maybe she'll just have a little look over her shoulder to make sure she's covering any potential attack Eldon is really trying to close that gap but uh, once again when you've got that 15 meter gap not possible with such little distance left good performance there from Mariana Longa Picking up, well, another five seconds there. And Marta Eldon, the 23-year-old from Oslo. And uh, Saarinen, she tried. She tried so, so hard to stay with the pace, but it, it was just too, too tough, the pace to live with. But we're going to have to take a, a fairly quick exit from here to go to the ski jumping. Harakov. But uh, well, there's Madic. She led at this point last year. She's down in ninth position at the moment. But uh, that one minute 32 will be greater when we look at the extra minute and a half from Kovalchuk by winning the three sprint lines. Usberg there in 10th position. Norgren in 10th. And Jakobsen in 12th. This must be Charlotte Kalla. She won three. Oh, Anna Haga, I beg your pardon. Kalla just coming up with 100 metres to go. So, well, there we are, the final standings here today. It's all about Justina Kowalczyk uh, taking this by six seconds ahead of Teresio Haug and Ariana Longa in third place. So, uh, we're going next over to uh, Harakov, the Czech Republic, with David Goldstrom. And uh, that's for the ski jumping. And, uh, 
Well, that's certainly going to be a, a fantastic, and again, after the, the four.